At the International Airport of San Jose, in a fertile valley about 4,000 feet above sea level, the plane in which we travel stops to call on Costa Rica, second smallest of the American republics, located between the countries of Panama and Nicaragua. This is the terminal station in Central America for the various airways operating between North and South America, and it is regarded as one of the best in the world. The passengers who come and go from here are an interesting conglomeration of people representing practically every race, color, and creed in the world. A few miles from here, we visit the capital city, which has a population of about 70,000 inhabitants. Unlike many important cities of Latin America, San Jose was not founded until long after the Spanish conquest. It became the capital of Costa Rica in 1823. There is a unique story in the history of Costa Rica about the American filibuster, William Walker, who, with the help of a gang of brigands, made himself dictator of Nicaragua and then attempted the conquest of Costa Rica. He was defeated and shot, but the United States paid Costa Rica an indemnity of $26,704 because of Walker's activities. This unique monument commemorates the victory over Walker's unsuccessful attempt to make himself dictator of Central America. Since the hectic days of William Walker, Costa Rica has had few revolutions, and most of them have been bloodless. Until recent years, the country had six times as many teachers as soldiers, and more than a third of its receipts were spent to improve the life of the working man. In the suburbs of San Jose may be found municipal golf courses and swimming pools, where one may enjoy the more wholesome diversions of life in peaceful seclusion. The Spaniards who first occupied Costa Rica came from northern Spain, and they were not so much conquistadores as farmers, settlers, and family men. Their pure-blooded descendants, now representing over 80% of the country's population, are a living tribute to their memory. Modern Costa Rican girls, in particular, are noted for their culture, intelligence, and personality. It is said there are more varieties of orchids in Costa Rica than in any other country. And although we didn't take time to verify this, we visited the farm of a famous orchid grower, where we found some outstanding examples, which may help to substantiate Costa Rica's claim to orchid fame. Delicately beautiful flowers are the most complex in the floral family, and the art of developing them from wild species into cultured varieties is a supreme achievement. Over 15,000 species and varieties are known throughout the world. Although Costa Rica is noted for its modern highways, this quaint transportation system is still in vogue, and no small amount of the country's produce is transported in this manner. The farmers vie with each other in decorating their handmade carts, the wheels of which often look like the tops of roulette tables. Even the wooden bars that are strapped to the horns of the oxen receive their share of the painted decorations. Although the traffic may be antique, the roads of Costa Rica are among the best in the world and this little country boasts that it is one of the first to complete its portion of the great Pan-American Highway. Among the scenic marvels of Costa Rica are her volcanoes, the best known of which are Poas, 9,000 feet above sea level and possessing the largest crater in the world, and its sister volcano, Iratsu, dominating the central plateau of the country.
In this barren region, the mighty forces of nature have been churning the depths of the earth for countless ages. And although we are probably gazing on the oldest land in this part of the world, we have the strange feeling of witnessing evolution at work, molding new land in the ceaseless forge of nature. In 1502, when Columbus landed on the shores of this country, he christened it Costa Rica, meaning rich coast. But it is not the wealth of gold and silver and other valuable mineral deposits which makes Costa Rica a rich country, for mining has not been developed as a dominant industry, and the continued economic prosperity of the country is dependent upon its plantations and small farms. Next to coffee, bananas are the chief crop of export and the investment in banana plantations is valued at over $23 million. Costa Rica was the first Central American nation to export bananas to the British Isles and Europe. This region was once a dense tropical forest, which has now succumbed to the developing hand of man. Water chemists locate supplies of water for irrigating the plants. Although about three-fourths of all American banana lands are in heavy rainfall zones, New modes in cultivation demand even more water. And in widespread use is this banana irrigation system, whereby the equivalent of two inches of rainfall every week is sprayed on the groves. The banana's scientific name is Musa sapientum, meaning fruit of the wise men. The Koran calls it the tree of paradise. But the banana does not grow on a tree. It is the harvest of the largest terrestrial plants, completely lacking a woody stem, a semi-bulbous plant with a leaf structure somewhat similar to that of the ordinary garden canna. The true stem is underground. It is a crop that cannot be ripened successfully on the plant, and the harvest must be cut green. On the modern banana plantation, routines of planting and pruning are such that the fruit can be cut for market every week and virtually every calendar day of the year, thereby making it a perpetual harvest. A hill comes into bearing within 12 months after planting, and one hill frequently produces about two bunches a year for as many as 25 or 30 consecutive years. At the loading stations, the bananas are thoroughly cleansed and purified before packing them into cars, which start them on their long journey into the banana markets of the world. And so life goes on in this banana realm, where a fruit that was practically unheard of in northern countries a century ago is now a staple food in the diet of mankind. Although the backs of mules and donkeys are still an important medium for transporting bananas, they are fast being transplanted by modern trucks, which can carry in one load enough bananas to put a hundred donkeys to shame. Back at the airport in San Jose, our plane is waiting to transport us to our northern homes, 3,000 miles away. Just a short journey in this modern age, which has reduced distances and boundaries to such an extent that a weekend trip today could mean a complete swing around the world.